X-Men 97, Season 1, Episode 5 Thoughts. This episode is called Remember It. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything Fox X-Men and the original anime show and the show leading up to and including this episode. The show is rated TV PG. And so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So, yeah. Um, I did not expect for this episode to have... Like, I, I, basically, like, half the episode, or actually a little more than half, passes before we have, like, an action scene, like, an actual... And even more so, I did not expect to be so okay with that. Like, that's the big part of the draw of these things, is the action. But until then, it's, like, drama and some wonderful soap opera. I really love how soap operatic you know some of these comic adaptations have gotten in in recent years you know just the the situation between scott and gene is like you would you would never see this outside of like a soap operatic comic book you know it's just yeah wonderful absolutely love it yeah i really appreciated the that the episode actually did let Scott be devastated, you know, this thing of, you know, yeah, he ends up snapping at the the interviewer and, you know, we, you know, we empathize with him. I really appreciate that. I, I really think we got to get past respectability politics, you know, perfect victims and such. And let's see, the... Yeah, uh, I quite appreciate calling Scott and Jean the power couple, considering, you know, they are two of the most powerful and their their kid, which I now feel comfortable saying since this episode does reveal, yes, that it's, you know, Cable is what Nathan Summers grows up to be in, in the future, you know. And... Let's see the and and that was also a very sweet moment that Madeline gets to you know just briefly interact with adult Cable and realize that it's Nathan. <laughs> I like when you know the thing of Beast and and the journalist you know complimenting each other and the. Right, I love how Genosha, yeah, it really does seem like it's, you know, it's a place where mutants can be themselves. Now, we, we've seen so many times in X-Men media of pretty much all kinds, you know, less so in like the video games primarily focused on fighting tournaments and such. But yeah, this thing of, you know, mutants have to hide their mutant abilities. They, you know... They will sometimes use them, but it's frequently like they'll they'll be hiding, you know, and and only use them sparingly or only use them, you know, for example, at Xavier's School for the Gifted. And and here we see Genosha where they're just running around the street using their powers, and no one is getting angry at them for it. You know, no one is judging them harshly for it. So it really does feel like this is, you know, a wonderful place. Now, if I understand correctly, the thing with Rogue and, and Magneto, like, they simplified it somewhat, if I understand correctly. I haven't read that comic, but I've heard others here on YouTube explain that basically Magneto is using his power to create a force field around his entire body that, you know, puts a, yeah, um, barrier between, so that Rogue does not, you know, yeah, this does not have the impact on him that she normally does when she touches someone else's skin. And here they just say, oh, it's, you know, the, the naturally occurring you know, um, what do they say? Uh, yeah, no, presumably you're watching this after you watch the episode, you already know. But, the, um, 
yeah, if, you know, like in, in, you know, in the comic, I believe it was like the Savage Land, and it seems like that was also what they did here in that, in that flashback. And, yeah, you know, just some, some great moments, you know, this thing of, yeah, you know, Rogue, like, I, I really appreciate that it is actually, you know, it's because of, you know, she says Magneto's pain, you know, it's, it's too much for them to, to be together because of the, the intense pain they both feel, you know, and... Uh, let's see. Right, yeah. Uh, I, I like the... So, the psychic connection, you know, the real-world equivalent would be, like, you know, someone dialing up their ex for a, a talk or something. But, yeah, you know, it is this thing of, you know, Scott confronts Gene and, and says, you know, are you feeling it or are you just remembering how you used to feel? You know, and I really love that the moment that she is like clearly in actual distress, he he's not like still, you know, one, then then the fight and the verbal fight ends immediately, and he expresses concern for her and tries to help. And let's see, yeah, did not expect so much like dancing and performing in this episode, but I'm, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. You know, this thing of on the streets of Genosha, they're they're performing, and you know later in the at, at night with the the big party, there's also some dancing there, and uh, I think that might right. Um, I was not expecting this much Sentinel stuff in you know so many episodes of this reboot, but. It's a soft reboot, but but yeah, um, I'm really loving it, and and I quite appreciated how anime they got near the end. You know, this thing of the the Sentinel fires his beam, and and then there's the the other beam, and and they meet. You know, and Gambit with the the on the motorcycle, which again really made me think Akira and yeah also just this idea of you know this is not just the sentinel it's this big massive like just yeah it's really really cool design and yeah um some really devastating you know deaths of of major characters in this episode uh, oh, right, right, bro. I'll, I'll talk more about the action, but just briefly I want to talk about, you know, I do appreciate, yeah, you know, the, the, um, what remains of the Circle Club. You know, they've just been biding their time. They didn't, like, stop trying to, to, you know, gain and maintain power. They just waited until there was a good moment for them to, to come back out. But, but yeah, the, the action, you know, the, the thing of just, yeah, you know, at, at what appears to be Magneto's death, certainly the, the Sentinel says, Omega level mutant neutralized, you know, yeah, Rogue, you know, she's going to attack it and, yeah, you know, Gambit realizes that's not she's not going to make it, so he has to to knock her out of the way. And then Gambit gets really close and it like stabs him and then he uses his power. Like I will say if this really is the the end of Gambit, this was one heck of a way. This was an amazing send-off, you know. Cuz cuz yeah, that is you know, one of his powers is by touch, you know, like, normally it's because he puts his hands on a thing, but yeah, like, I, I'm i not sure if it's happened in the comic, but I could imagine, yeah, you know, the, the and, and it would be perfectly fine if it hasn't, but that is his power, you know, and when, when he touches something, he can charge it with the kinetic energy, there's, 
I, do, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't also work if he's stabbed like that. So, yeah, very clever. And, you know, the name's Gambit. Remember it. <laughs> Some right, also some great stuff with uh, Nightcrawler, and the yeah, you know, apparently he was brought in because Genosha needed someone to deal with the mutants who have faith, and it does make perfect sense for for that to be him. You know, he himself is Christian, and he is also one of those people who are actually, you know, he's he would help someone who isn't Christian. You know, he can, he's probably a bigger fan of people who have some religious faith than people who are atheists, but he's he's going to try to help. And I think that might be... Right, I like when, when Gambit says, you know, so what are you going to do about Magneto's offer? And just then, you know, he's been... He's been throwing these cards into the fire, and just then we get a close-up of, you know, he's holding up a queen card, you know. Very nice. And I think that might be what I have to say about... Right, um, so when, when Scott is caught red-minded, you know, in a, in a psychic, you know, secret meeting with Madeline, and, you know, the, the, yeah, he and Jean, you know, run down the stairs, you know, arguing about it, props to that one camera operator who managed to, like, he was filming in that direction, just that, you know, I have very, very little experience, but I do know that's one of the things you want to do if you're filming something to try to capture the most like yeah what whatever brings the most you know is is the most impactful try to get that on on camera I think, oh right i i quite appreciate this thing of you know yeah scott said that the first day of school he ran into jean so she knocked his books on the ground, you know. Again, like, this is the kind of stuff we need to, to help humanize, because they're kind of goody-two-shoes a lot of the time. We need, we need them to have made mistakes, at least in the past. And I think the, the show is doing a really solid job of that. Yeah, uh, amazing episode. I, holy crap, it's going to be difficult to wait an entire week. I do really hope it's. I hope that at least some of the the uh, fallout from this episode will be dealt with in the very next episode, rather than us having to wait. You know. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Yeah. Apparently, the next one is Life Death Part Two. So it's possible that it won't be right away. But yeah. Uh, amazing. Just really, really love this episode. Yeah. Just, holy crap. <laughs>